Hello. For all of those who are taking in interest, I say hello and thank you for tuning in. This is Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 10. That's right. That means there's been a decade of these summer music connections happening, which is kind of incredible. For me, anyway. You get to a certain point and you go, well, the decades are flying by. <laughs> Things change during different points of time in one's life. So I was really thinking a lot about what to do in this series. And it came to me and my wife, Dr. Carol Vieira, who you heard me speak about many times, agreed that a great topic would be the art of the student. So that's what this series is going to be about, the art of the student. It's fascinating to think about, isn't it? Now, I wouldn't say that this video series is just for students. Because looking at the territory, uh, I had to ask the question, is there an art of the student? There's been many books on the art of teaching, the art of playing, the art of this or that. I remember I first saw a book you know, years ago when it first came out, I think I was 13, The Art of Trombone Playing by Edward Kleinhammer. Even the right way to open up the case. <laughs> I thought, ooh, I'm not doing very well. <laughs> and um, The Art of Brass Playing by Phil Farkas and all sorts of things. Um, so it's really interesting, this whole thing, The Art of the Teaching the art of this, the art of gardening, the art of putting together cars. I mean, if you probably research it, I'm sure there's a lot of the art of this or that. But what about the art of the student? What about the art of the student? Is there an art of the student? That's a big question I've been asking myself. In one of the videos I, about the art of teaching I've talked about before, I believe that the ART, to first approach the subject, stands for Allowance, Resistance, and Transference. I'll let you think about that or try to find it on one of the videos. What about the art of the student? And I thought, well, Applying regular training. That makes sense. But the further I started to think about the art of the student, I started to say, well, what kind of student? What does the student want? Now, I've been teaching for over 50 years now, starting, you know, with teaching junior high kids how to play when I was first in junior high. I actually started to teach a little bit in elementary school with students my age. And then in junior high, the band director said, hey, I think you're going to do this better than me. So in seventh grade, when I was 12, I started to take on a lot of the students who were in the junior high band. And then some even in the high school. And I loved working with people and still do. But when you start to think about what is this art of the student, it also it sounds like someone comes with something already. You know, the art of teaching sounds like, oh, this has been looked into for years. And this person writes this book on, from the experience of their life, from the experience 
of being a teacher and finding the ways to make it more refined and what's going to get a result out of a student through their teaching. But every teacher knows that not all students are the same. Just like students know, not all teachers are the same. And what do you think about that if you're a student or a teacher? If you're a teacher, what kind of student do you like to teach? Someone who just says yes to you? Or someone who's enthusiastic and wanting to learn from you? Or someone who really doesn't come with a lot of interest and they think it's okay and it's a thing to do, another after-school activity to play an instrument and it's not really coming from a need in their life or a strong desire in their life. Another thing to try, which I'm not saying is not valid. It certainly is valid. But what is it? My computer looks very dark, and so I hope it's not showing up dark over um, your side of the fence. But anyway, I'm just going to leave it. There, it seems light again. I don't know. The art of the student. Someone who really listens to you. They're listening. They're taking it in. And you give them an assignment, and they're going to work on it. That sounds good. That sounds like they're applying. And I've said to my students, I said, you know what the first law of the student is? Immediate application. So if you have immediate application and you do it on a regular basis, then you can take what I said, applying regular training, ART, as it applies to student. Because if you're not applying on a regular basis what you're being taught, applying regular teachings, it could, it could be said, then what's the point? Then maybe you don't really want it. So keep with me even if it sounds a little bit jagged. But when I think about it the most, there's the person who comes in that's almost desperate. They're thirsty. They're hungry. They want something. Now let's jump ahead a little bit to the college level. People come in get into a music school, let's say. A good university that has a good music department, can be a conservatory, a university, a junior college, whatever, and they get in with the instructor in a private lesson situation. And are they coming in with a preconceived idea of what they want? I want to be in an orchestra. Are they saying, I want to be a soloist? I want to be in the marching band. In other words, their aspirations could be different. Hmm, maybe something with the ART. The A has to do with aspiration. What is someone's aspiration? They might not even know yet. Someone said, oh, you want to be in a band? Here's a trombone. I know you wanted to play oboe, but we're short on trombones. 
or something, which you hear this all the time. You look like you have long arms. Well, I, they wouldn't have given me a trombone. In fact, one teacher started to kind of talk me out of it. Well, you don't look like you can. Well, I knew what I wanted. So when you have a student like me who says, I know what I want, you don't mess with that. You do not mess with that. Unless through the course of the process of working with the person, say, hey, why don't you try this out? And maybe it's a better fit. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. It really isn't. So, aspiration. What do we aspire to? Aspiration, respiration. There's an ART. It's very much to do with breathing, isn't it? <laughs> As we aspire, we need to respire. See, most people don't have time to process anymore. They just want to be told. I had one student tell me I was working with them. And I said, you know, go for this, try to... Dip. I said, could you just tell me how to do it? Wait a minute here. Do we want to be a student of art? And music is one of the arts. Living actually is an art. Well, let's just stay with arts that we might be a little more familiar with, like dancing, acting, painting, sculpturing. There's so many different kinds of arts, okay? And it's almost like art means that we take some action and we take it to a very fine level. Well, right in there is science. The art of this starts to resonate with the world of science. People say, yes, science. Well, science is as good as the scientist. What about that little thing called discovery? To me, a student needs interest. And what's really fascinating about that word is interest anagrams to enters it. You cannot enter any process and get you know, full results, valuable results, if you're not interested. That's not going to happen. No, I'm not saying all of a sudden you can't grow into having an incredible interest. But eventually, you're going to have to be very interested. <laughs> Doesn't that sound practical? I said, I'd like to take some lessons, but I'm not very interested. Well... Sometimes people walk in and they don't seem very interested. To be involved in anything to want to elevate it to the level of art, and I'm saying that in a very, very broad way, what art could be. There has to be a life need of discovery, of wonder, of awe. Awe. Reverence. And there's a T in there. I thought of the word transcendence. And that's really getting into kind of the upper realms. But if someone comes to you and says, you know what, 
All I want to do is get a job. I want to be a good player so I can get work. Well, if you want to be a freelance player, for example, you've got to do a lot of different things, I would imagine. And I've seen a lot of freelancers being able to do many different kinds of things, many different kinds of playing. So they have to be willing to want to learn a lot of different stuff. And maybe because they're really hungry, because literally they're hungry and they need money, <laughs> and they want to do this to make a living. Because they enjoy it, and it beats other kinds of work. So they'd rather be playing whatever instrument and make money doing that. Maybe they're even pretty good at it. So they're going to take the time to be a very good operator at what they do. There's nothing wrong with that. At all. At all. At all. At all. Nothing wrong with that. So what is the art of a student? I guess we're talking about what kind of student. If we have a young little student, and someone said, my brother, and they come in and said, my brother had a trombone, and so I want to play trombone. Beautiful little innocent statement. Maybe they're a little bit of a competitive brother. Little brother, maybe. And wants, and wants to really show the other brother up. So they have some motivation. Motivation gets into it. Sometimes we do something and people give us a lot of recognition. So we want to do more of it. We want to become even better so we get more recognition. Then there's that person who wants to play because it speaks to their soul. It's a way of using the instrument as a tube or pathway to release aspects of the deeper part of themselves. I use the trombone, for example, as a tube, as a pathway to put every feeling I had in it. If I was mad, boy, you knew it. <laughs> My grandma would come in the room. Wow, you sound good today. You know, she said, you play good when you're mad. <laughs> she meant I was playing with some real, real strength. I'd play if I was incredibly sad. I'd play if I was really inspired and I heard something and I wanted to do it too because there was something in me that needed to do that. Like hearing, you know, when I used to listen to old records of Chicago Symphony and playing, you know, the Strauss tone poems or something. Oh man, I, I had to do that. The whole music got me. I had to do that. Sometimes a student wants to be like someone else, someone they admire. They have an idol or a mentor. And they want to play like that person. So they want to model their playing. So this series, The Art of the Student, will be filled with certain contemplations. But from this little kind of funky, I don't know if it was funky, uh, a sincere way into the territory, we could say, what do you want? What are you willing to do for that which you want? And how long will you stay at it? Now, maybe this kind of question is more for someone a little older, maybe high school age or in college. They decided they wanted to go into music or anything. What is your asp What are your aspirations? What do you want? What are you willing to do? Here's another side of the coin.
And I'm confronted with this a lot. Students think these days, maybe other times too, but it's even, I think, more now. I have to play this way to get the job. In my heart, I really want to do it this way. But I know I have to do this to get the job. Well, here's what I say to that. How brave are you willing to be? Years ago, my wife and I in the Frequency Band started something called the New Professional. Meaning, look, you're not going to get a job, let's say, in an orchestra if you have really serious pitch problems, if you have a horrible rhythm problem, if, you, if you're missing every other note, well, you're going to have a hard time getting any kind of, kind of work as a musician. So you get those tidied up. Do they have to be like perfect? Do they have to be measured like this? I don't think so. Other people have other opinions on that. But are you going to sacrifice your own feeling your whole career to play the way someone else wants you to play? Or will you have a way of saying, oh, the music can go like this and broaden your interpretations? Because we're all going to have favorites. And this is where the personal art comes in. Do you want to be a student of the professional world? Or you want to be a student of the deeper art? A student of the deeper art. We'll probably have enough flexibility and adaptability to say, okay, I'll play it like this for this particular circumstance and see what, see what happens. But if you think you're going to do that and suck every bit of life out of you and just go with this little skeletized version of, let's say, uh, Ride of the Valkyries, where someone go, yep, that's good pitch. Yep, that's good rhythm. Yep, that was even. And nothing else. question is, what do you want to be a student of? And there ends the first video, The Art of the Student, from Frequency Bones and the Music Connection 10. See you next time.